Okay, so that works. And let me see this. Oh yeah, now that we have everything in here, we need to make it spawn inside of the world, like generate. So let's go public void generate surface. And now this method, again, like this is the constructor, this method is in base mod, which is generate surface right here. And it takes a world object, takes a random, and then an int, and another int. So, okay. Uh, let's go. Wow, this is, these tutorials are going to be pretty long. So let's just make a world object, random rand, int base x. You can name these whatever you want. Just remember them. Base z. Those are the base values of x and z, which is the length and width, I believe. Um, so next, what you want to do is you make a for loop of... No, let's do, I like, I like X's. Nope, I can't do X, can I? Well, yeah, I actually can. All right. X equals zero. I. Why am I doing I? I'm just used to I loops. <laughs> X plus plus. Let's see what 10. Um, this is, this is how, um, how frequent your aura is. So let's just, for the sake of this video, let's just put up to 30 just so we see it. Like it's going to. Trust me, it's 30 is a lot, so you're going to see it really frequently. And now you want to make three variables. Um, x coordinate e would equal to base x plus rand dot next int. And um, here, okay, we'll just, for now, I'm just going to put, um, just gonna put 5 in here. I'll explain in a second. Int y coordinate equals rand dot next int. Well, another five in here, and int z coordinate equals rand. Nope, equals base z plus rand dot next int five. Okay, so let me explain real quick. Um, these can go up to sixteen, and that is because every chunk is sixteen times sixteen, and I think one hundred high. So I. I don't know. I, I wish I could get some like graphing going on here, but I can't. Um, so basically, this is your x coordinate. If you know your 3D coordinate grids, your x coordinate goes like this. Goes goes like in a line like this, it, exactly like that. And your z coordinate goes like this. And your y coordinate goes like this. So basically, what you're telling this to do is find some kind of a base, like some find like a random, I guess point in the chunk and then add anywhere from 1 to 16 to that meaning how much ore is there going to be in a line on a x like on a horizontal line I guess so like, let's say we start here let's, let's say we start here like where my mouse is right here and then let's say this is our base and then you want to add a random integer from 1 to 16 so let's see we add 5 so the ore is going to start here and it's going to be up to here. Now, if we had a 10, it'd be from here to here. This pretty much determines how big your vein is. Same goes with Z. So basically, you're determining the length and width of your um, vein. And But the Y coordinate is actually how high does it spawn. So here, we can go up to like 5. That's, that's like, I think, slime spawning like 1 to 6. So if we put 6, this would be like slime level. Now let's put up to 70, which is, I think, above ground, like way above ground. So it's going to spawn on the surface and we'll be able to see it. But basically this is this is how you determine the height of where it spawns up to. If we put like 10 here or something like that, I don't know how much diamonds spawn, like, up to like 18, I think, or something like that. So we put 18 here, this would be like diamond level. And we're just going to put 70, which is fine, and 16 here to get the biggest veins. Of course, if you want to make some rare ores, you want to play around with that and whatnot. So, yeah. Now, um, let's actually make this. Um, what am I doing here? Uh, oh, yeah. Let's let's actually spawn this in the world. Man, I am talking way too much. Hoping to uh, get this tutorial under like 25 minutes. This is going to suck. 
All right, so you're going to do New World Gen Mineable, which is a class right here. And that class takes two integers, which are uh, right here. Mineable block ID is the ID of your block. And then number of blocks, I am not sure what that is really, but I think it's like the max number of blocks you can get per chunk. I think that's it. I'm not sure. So let's just let's just go ahead and do um, blocky, and that's our obje object that block ID as my as our first ID, and then uh, how many per chunk? Let's just put like seventy. I I I think that's gonna work. And you can do dot generate, and we're gonna do a world object, a random object. Uh, I, J, K, which is our X, Y, and Z, so it's going to be X chord, Y chord, and Z chord. And there we go. So we have pretty much everything done so far, but the only thing we need is uh, we need to put our custom block.png somewhere. Now, I think I have this. Yep, I do. I don't have my MCP open. So let me let me open up my MCP. Okay. Um let's see. Here's my MCP. I, I am using it on my desktop now. I'm no longer using it on a flash drive. Because I think it was lagging because it was on my flash drive, I'm not sure. So okay, so you're gonna go to your MCP. You're gonna go to your wait, is it yeah, it's bin Minecraft. And then right here when you see net and you see you might see some other classes, you're gonna want to bring in your PNG. Now your PNG has to be 16 by 16. And I just made this real quick. This is like this is way old, like months and months. So yeah, this is my PNG. It's I know it's not that pretty or anything, but it works. Make sure to spell it right, custom block. Um do I have it spelled right here? Custom block. Okay. Now um, this will not work inside. I don't think it's wait, wait. I don't think it's gonna work inside of Eclipse. Oh, I already know it's gonna mess up probably. Well, okay, there you go. Um, so it tried to texture override, but it couldn't find custom block. Okay, yeah, you can't do this inside of Eclipse because um, it needs to recompile before it can use that um, custom.png. So for that, you're gonna want to let me actually uh, let me actually uh, delete these real quick. I have a hmm. I made some example ones that I'm using on my other screen, example or, and I want to delete them so they don't spawn in my world. Yeah, let's delete that and block Mysterium, which I wanted to do in the first place, but it didn't let me. Block Mysterium. Let's delete that one also. Okay, so now that we have that done, you're going to go to your MCP. I'm probably going to cut this tutorial in half because this is way too long. All right. You're going to go back to your MCP once you have your custom block inside of your bin Minecraft. Custom block, just plop it right in there. Uh, make sure everything in your Eclipse is saved. And let me actually give you another tip while I'm still in Eclipse. If you're using two screens, um, just click on the window right here and click New Window. Now, this will allow you to... Oh, yeah, basically, it'll give you a new window. You can you can put up to your other screen. And then you can drag classes over to the other window. And you see, like, you get this other window. You can. It's, it's a lot easier to code. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so now that we have all this saved, make sure to save it. You're going to want to go to your MCP and you want to recompile. Now I'm hoping this is. Oh, there goes my firewall. I'm hoping this won't take as long as it did before. Because I'm probably just going to cut it then. Okay, so it did recompile fairly quick. And, uh, well, it's a lot better than those thousand seconds that it did on my flash drive, which means it probably was my flash drive that made it lag. So, okay, so it recompiled. Now, like I said before, you can re-obfuscate, and you can test this out on your real Minecraft, if you want. 
and but I'm not going to do that just yet. You can actually do, just do start client without having it to reobfuscate. Oh, stupid firewall. Uh, yeah, you just simply start client after you recompile, and slowly but surely it's going to give you a client. Now, see custom block right here. It overrid that that uh, that thing, that texture. So let's create a world. New world, that's fine. Okay, yeah, um, my Minecraft just crashed, so I'm pretty sure I spawned a little too many of those, uh, little too many of those blocks. So let's just turn this down to, uh, I don't know, let's say 35. I think it's 35 blocks per chunk. So let's go ahead and save that. Gonna go to MCP again and recompile. Did do, do should recompile faster now. I don't know. Sweet, thirteen seconds. Uh, oh no! Why did I just click that? No, I didn't want that. All right. So now you want to start client again. This should also go faster. All right, there you go. Uh, then that, that world might be a little corrupt, so I'm not gonna try to open that up again. Uh, let's go create. Up oh, there you go. Yeah. I think I just created way too many <coughs> way too many blocks for uh, one chunk. So make sure that number doesn't go over like 40 or something. Cause uh, yeah. Now where is our block? Huh. Well, actually, what? Uh, we're at 74 Y right now, and I set it to. 65. So let's dig down a little until we find. Oh, here it is. We found our block. Yay, we found our block. So here you go. Here's a block. And if I was in uh, survival right now, which I don't think I can actually deal with a pickaxe right now, I'm not sure. Uh, nope. But if I was in survival right now and I would mine these, it would actually give me the block itself and then I could place it down again and I could you know dig it up again and place it down and whatever but yeah um, hopefully you like this video and if you have any questions make sure to post a comment about it um, if you actually like the video and want to follow the series I made a playlist for this and um, yeah make sure to subscribe to that playlist if you can or like watch that playlist subscribe to my channel uh, I'll be doing a lot more Minecraft Let's Plays and stuff like that, not just programming. But, um, yeah, um, thanks for watching, and make sure to watch out for videos in the future. See ya!